Coming up on Two and a Half Geeks, SSDs, HTC, and AMD. WTF. <laughs> the bar has been set wicked fast. It's rocked in the benchmarks. We're going to up the ante uh, a little bit. Processing power. Maybe. I kind of understand this. Oh, sorry. Oh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Let's start then, because Marco <laughs> wants to start. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Two and a Half Geeks. I'm Aya Zaktar, alongside Dave Altavilla and Marco Geppetto from Hot Hardware. How are you guys doing? Fantastic. Oracle. Really? That good? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> And then once again, nobody cares how we're doing. All they care about is hot hardware. Let's talk about some technology, shall we? Now, Dave, we originally were going to talk about a notebook, and then you guys are like, hey, tell you what, we're going to change it on you. We want to talk about an SSD, which is a huge surprise to me because, Dave, you never talk about SSDs. So uh, what, what, what's this one? In my hand, I'm not kidding you now, I have $11,500 worth of solid-state storage right there. Eleven thousand dollars, and it looks a lot like um, I don't know an old sound card. <laughs> yeah, it. this is the uh, LSI warp drive. Believe it or not, it is a uh, three hundred gig PCI Express SSD and three hundred gigs of storage, and um, it uh, runs over a PCI Express by eight connection. You can see right there. There are, if you look real closely, there are six individual cards. Uh, in total, at you know, 50, 60 gig cards, I have to look at the actual partitioning on each of the cards, but 300 gigs total, a little bit of over provisioning for memory uh, in there uh, with the SSDs. And this thing will offer, in some cases, a gig of throughput read and write over a gig in throughput. We've so far tested it um, as the fastest thing in the lab yet, and that's faster than even a Fusion IO card, which is something like. I don't know, seven grand for that kind of capacity, or <laughs> it's 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 insane. It's it's the fastest SSD money can buy right now. So, what do you think about that, Ayaz? You want it? I think it's <laughs> very, very, very expensive, and uh, yeah. you guys don't pay me enough to to buy something like that. So, I don't know how that's going to work. True. <laughs> so yeah, L, L, the 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 special sauce is LSI's. Um, uh, SAS controller right here. It's a hardware RAID controller by LSI. And these are all, you know, Micron, NAND flash. And you also have Sandforce SSD controllers times six on this sucker. So serious throughput. Um, and uh, yeah, again, the fastest thing we've ever tested, but no joke, uh, you know, workstation professionals, um, you know, uh, web server, you know, data center environments, you know, the average gamer is not going to throw this thing in their rig, that's for sure. But we like the fastest, hottest storage you can find in the market um, because we are hot hardware, and safe to say this thing's pretty hot. That that sounds pretty expensive, <laughs> and I bet it's amazing. And I will never know how great it is because I cannot purchase it. But <laughs> I can read about it. I know you guys will have it at hot hardware. You guys do a full review yet, or is that just some testing? It's it's coming up. It's a kind of a sneak peek. We're we're going through. I'm actually crunching the numbers on it right now. Just about done with it, and um, so we're gonna slice and dice it and spread it out for everyone to see in the coming weeks. You'll you'll love it. I'm sure. Now, Marco, you did some testing of your own. I'm pretty sure on some graphics cards from AMD, the Radeon HD 6870 and the 6850. They're I think they're overclocked out of the box. Is that right? Yeah, I actually didn't do this article. Our man, uh, Matt Miranda, did. Um, he rounded up a couple of 6870 cards and 6850s, a couple from Power Color and one from HIS. You know, this is kind of the, the sweet spot of the market, you know, the sub $300, 200 to $275 range. And we took a look, you know, I, I took a look at the, the launch cards, the, the reference cards that are not overclocked. And now that you know manufacturers have had a little time to tweak and work their own magic, the overclocked versions are out. So Matt took a look at a few, uh, ran a whole bunch of tests, and uh, came to find that the the mid-priced one turned in the best. The mid-priced card from HIS turned in the best scores and was his favorite. But they all performed really well. They're all you know nice current generation cards. They're all winners in your opinion. Is, is that that can't be right? There must. What, what did any of them like? Just kind of pull away from everything, or are they just kind of good? See, n nothing, nothing pulled away because you have the, the HIS card. I'm probably going to mix this up, but one had faster memory and a slightly lower clock GPU. Another had a faster GPU, slightly lower clock memory. So you're going to see very similar performance, and none pulled way ahead of the others. 
But the, the HIS card ended up being a little cheaper while offering similar or better performance depending on the game. So, you know, when you factor everything in, that, that kind of gets the nod. If it's cheaper and similar performance, that's the way to go. Now, you said these were overclocked. Are the, these are overclocked, and the ones you tested, your one, uh, personally, reference ones, were not overclocked. Right. Did that make a huge difference at all or not? No, you know, it's, it depends on how big the overclock is. And with these Radeons, you're seeing 10, 20, 30 megahertz overclocks out, out of the box. So, no, it's, it's not huge at all. In fact, if you wanted to save a few more bucks, you can just buy a reference card and overclock yourself. You just don't get the guaranteed overclock and the warranty coverage. You know, if that's something that, that you kind of, if you need it personally for your card, if you want that warranty and a guarantee to hit certain speeds, then you buy the factory overclock cards. Let's talk a little bit about AMD. Their actual personnel is, has a big change. I know that their CEO stepped down. I, this kind of broke during the week. I'm not really sure what happened. Dave, do you know what happened? Yeah, um, as, as the saying goes, he got quit. Um, unfortunately, yeah, uh, Dirk Meyer um, basically was was let go uh, by the board of directors at AMD, and um, you know, it it just it, it it's an interesting story because you wonder how in touch the board of directors uh, of any large company you know of this size and scale uh, are with either technology, certainly in the high tech space, um, or you know the the market in which uh, you know these companies have to operate and the market conditions. And let's face it, the last few years have been you know nothing but a roller coaster ride. Whether you're in semiconductors or uh, pork bellies, um, so it, it was it was an interesting uh, story. Uh, Joel Preska for from our team uh, covered. Um, word on the street is that Dirk, who by the way turned the company around. Uh, a few years back in, in you know, uh, 08, um, really brought them from a huge debt position to, um, you know, actually you know, getting out of debt and having, you know, more liquidity and, and, and better operating uh, figures. Um, he, he basically, they, they say the word in the street was that he was sort of lit up by the board for um, not having a sound strategy for uh, an ultra mobile processor for a, a processor for the handset market and they cited uh, the sale of the imagine core technologies which was a, an acquisition of an ip based acquisition under the ati umbrella when they acquired ati uh, they, they sold amd sold the imagine uh, technology portion to qualcomm uh, back in 2009 for 65 million dollars this is the same core, the Adreno graphics core, you know, 200, 205, and 220 coming up, uh, that are now found in Qualcomm Snapdragon processor, which is in a myriad of Android handsets. And so it's almost like, you know, somebody at the, you know, a couple of guys at the board of directors are looking at Qualcomm's success these days in the market and saying, you know, hey, buddy, you, you really missed this one. Um, and I think it's uh, hindsight's 2020, you know. Yeah, I mean, that, that sounds like they're really picking on this guy for something that they probably didn't foresee happening. I mean, phones aren't exactly... I mean, who thought they would be what they are now? I mean, seriously. I mean, but AMD really has to turn things around, I thought. But anyway, let's talk about HTC and the HD2, which apparently can run Windows Phone 7. Is that right, Marco? Yeah, this is actually... This is really cool stuff. So the, the HTC phones are kind of known for being easily hackable. The, the XDA developers community, there's huge followings for a whole bunch of HTC phones. And the HD2 in particular is probably the most popular because it's you know a fast phone, one gigahertz processor. And over time, it's, it's been hacked to run Windows Mobile. It's got a very, very complete, practically perfect Android port. And now there's a Windows Phone 7 port. And what's interesting about that is Microsoft really locked that OS down. They're trying to take much more control over Windows Phone 7 to make sure the experience is consistent across tons of different phones. And people were thinking, okay, maybe it's not going to be quite as hackable. You're not going to see custom ROMs with Windows, Windows Phone 7. But it happened, and you know, just about everything works. And even the uh, Windows Live services works on this hacked ROM. The only thing that's not working is the Marketplace and Xbox Live features, but you know, there's scuttlebutt in, in that community that even those are going to get enabled. Any idea how long this, this kind of hack took? Or like, was there an, 
how difficult was this? I mean, like you were saying, Microsoft locked it down, but did they just kind of leave stuff open? Is it, was, it, was it like the Kinect where they could just, they just say, they, they're going to say <laughs> later on, oh yeah, we meant to do that. So it's not like the Kinect, but so the, 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 the custom phone ROM, you know, cooking community, the, the chefs that cook the ROMs, they're going to make it sound like they're magicians, but the HD2 is on, on the hardware level very similar to the new HD7 which runs Windows Phone 7 natively. Uh -huh. So I don't have all the specifics. There was a lot of, there was work involved and I'm not minimizing what the, uh, the group that pulled it off did, but they had a, a base to work from, from the HD7 that kind of just needed a little massaging to get it to work on the HD2. And it's more the, uh, the workarounds to get live services working and things like that that probably took more work. Yeah, I mean, now that, now that I'm thinking about it, that's right, Windows Phone 7 launched on a ton of different pieces of hardware. And how different can HTC stuff be anyway? I mean, they're all well, they, stuff. you know, HTC will, they're kind of known for pushing the envelope hardware wise, but the HD7 in particular didn't really push the envelope. It's just kind of a, a repackaged HD2 if you look at the specs. That, that, that's a great review right there. It didn't push the envelope. <laughs> hey, hey, Windows Phone 7 is pretty sweet though. We're, we've been looking at a number of handsets lately, and uh, I've been looking at this, the uh, Samsung Focus, and I tell you, it's it's it is a nice handset OS, no question about it. Now, there's there's a contest coming up. Does that have anything to do with phones? Do we have any idea? No, 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 no. nothing to do with phones. Well, then what is it? What, what could it be possibly about? Anything? <laughs> any hints, Dave? We're, yeah, we'll we'll be giving away a uh, another killer gaming rig, um, and uh, we're not quite sure what platform we're on yet, whether it's AMD or Intel. Uh, Probably Intel with all the Sandy Bridge goodness that's been going around lately. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, in the next week or so, we'll be announcing. And um, we'll probably throw a wrinkle in it of some sort. But uh, in general, if you're in the community at Hot Hardware, you're contributing, you're vocal, you're, you're being seen, you're, you're, you're in the scene, you're in the know, uh, you got a good shot at winning. So stay tuned. And don't forget, you can find everything we talk about at hothardware.com or around the web at dig.com slash hothardware, twitter.com slash hothardware, facebook.com slash hothardware, youtube.com slash hothardware vids. And once again, go back to hothardware.com because it all starts right there. So we'll see everybody next week. What do you say? Sound like a plan? Yes, Sounds good plan. to me. Thanks, buddy. All right. <laughs> so long.